Okay, so if you are studying trigonometry or some other advanced course like pre-calculus, well, you might be having trouble with uh, De Moore's theorem, and you are not alone because this is a typical spot in those courses where students get confused, at least initially, because this is a little complex. But uh, what I'm going to do here is show you an example of how to use De Moore's theorem to solve a problem like this. All right, so what do we have here? Well, we have a complex number, negative square root of three plus i, and we want to take this thing to the eighth power. Now, this complex number is written in a plus b i form, and again, we're going to take this thing to the eighth power. So how could we approach this? Well, one might say, well, I don't need this theorem. I could just take this thing and multiply it by itself eight times. Well, you definitely don't want to do that. That would be very arduous, uh, and it's not the way you take powers of complex numbers, at least high powers. You can uh, you know, find the square of this without too much difficulty. But to find the eighth power of this, well, you're going to need something else, uh, and that something else is De Moore's theorem. Again, this is a critical must-know at uh, you know this level of mathematics. Again, courses like trigonometry, and I'm talking like a full trigonometry course, which is typically taught inside of a course like, let's say, pre-calculus. But if you're at this level of math, this is something you need to know. And again, if you're having a tough time with this, you are not alone. And I hope to clear this up at least a little bit. Um, I won't be able to teach a full lesson on this. That's uh, too much information for this one video, but I think you'll have a pretty good sense of what to do or what at least De Moore's theorem is about and how to apply it to solve this problem right here. Okay, but if you want to try this problem all on your own before I show you the answer and walk to the solution, I think that would be awesome. Now, this problem, I'm just going to tell you, would take most students probably like maybe even up to 10 minutes to do. Okay, these problems are not fast, simple problems. So if you want to pause the video and work on this for a little bit, that is fantastic. But uh, I will show you the right answer in just one second. And then, of course, I want to walk through exactly what De Moore's theorem is about and how uh, we're going to apply it to solve this problem. And by the way, what we want to do here is find the eighth power of this complex number in A plus B I form. Okay, so that is a little detail that we need to understand. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so hopefully we understand the question. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is the following. So here is our complex number. We have negative uh, square root of 3 plus i all this to the eighth power. Well, what is the answer? It is this, negative 128 plus 128i square root of three. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, I definitely have to give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional expert in the area of De Morve's theorem. They'll be like, I don't have no idea what that is, and please do not teach me. I do not want to put anything more into my brain. And that's a good thing because there is a lot of information that goes along with this. Again, I congratulate you if you're at this level of math. Um, so if this seems a little bit difficult when you're learning, uh, learning it for the first time, well, again, you're not alone. Don't give up. And uh, by the time we finish this video, you'll be looking like this as well if you didn't get this problem. Okay, so I'm going to make some assumptions here. I'm going to assume that you already have some pretty good knowledge of trigonometry and some other uh, kind of prerequisites if you are interested in this video. Uh, you know, you're like, hey, DeMora's theorem, yeah, that's what I'm learning. Well, if you're at this level of uh, uh, math, again, you should already have some prerequisite knowledge. So I'm going to kind of make those assumptions. But let's go ahead and take a quick look at what this uh, DeMora's theorem thing is all about. Okay, so in the big world of math, when we are dealing with complex numbers, so remember we have two different number systems. We have the real number system and the complex number system. So complex numbers are defined as A plus B I, or at least these are the forms of, um, this is one form of a complex number. So there is a real part and then there is an imaginary part. So when we have a complex number, one of the things that we wanna be able to do 
is to find the powers of complex numbers, like this is our problem, right? But also we would like to find the roots of complex numbers, something like this as well. So how do we do this? Well, uh, this is where De Morf's theorem comes into play. Extremely important theorem. Let's take a look at it right now. Okay, so De Morf's theorem. If Z, okay, Z is our complex number. Okay, so that's what Z is. It's just a complex number in A plus B I form. Okay, so again, for example, this number right here is a complex number, but we'll assign it a variable Z. We'll call it Z. So if this complex number Z is in this form, and what is this form? R times cos uh, cosine theta plus I sine theta. This is polar form or trigonometric form. Okay, this is something that you should already know how to master or uh, basically do is to take a um, complex number like this, okay, and turn it into a um, um, uh, basic, basically a trigonometric or polar form. That this right here is a big topic in and of itself, okay? Now, again, I'm not going to be able to teach all of this. Uh, let me just go ahead and make one quick uh, comment right now because I'm going to tell you or I'll remind you later in this video. If you are truly struggling in all of this, yeah, guess what, Mr. YouTube Math Man? This is, I don't even get this. I can't do that. I can't do this. Don't panic. Check out my pre-calculus course. It's my full course instruction. I will teach you everything you need to know about uh, trigonometry, De Morris theorem, uh, polar form, all that kind of stuff, because you know this stuff does require a lot of full instruction and a lot of detailed explanation on problems. Okay, so if um, if you don't understand, you know, even this part right here, you know, you're going to want to need, you're, you're going to have to understand this before you, you know, take a further look at De Moore's theorem. Okay, so let's just assume that you understand what I'm talking about. So this complex number Z, we can write into trigonometric or polar form. And this, again, is the radius times cosine theta plus I sine theta. Now, what we're going to do is say if Z is this, okay, is a complex number. So if this is a complex number, again, we can write, write a complex number in this form or this form. So Z is a complex number and N is any positive integer. Okay. Again, any positive integer. So we're talking like one, two, three, et cetera, those type of numbers. Then we have this right here, Z to the N. In other words, we're taking this complex number to some power like one, two, three, four, or maybe eight, because that's the problem we're going to be doing is equal to r to the n, now this is where we're talking about this r right here, to the n uh, times cosine n times the angle theta plus i sine n times theta. Okay, so that is De Morf's theorem. Now we need to go ahead and apply it, and uh, let's go and do that right now. Okay, so first things first, here is our problem. We have this complex number, okay, we want to take it to the eighth power. So we can't do anything. This is our complex number uh, Z. Okay, we're gonna take it to the eighth power. We can't do anything until we write this complex number Z into trigonometric or polar form because currently it's an A plus B I uh, rectangular form. And uh, you know most of the time we're, we deal with complex numbers in this form, but in this case, we need to put this thing in a trigonometric form. This is a problem in, uh, uh, in and of itself but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you the work or actually show you the answer, okay? So here is the answer. So when you take this uh, complex number in A plus B I form and you put it into polar or trigonometric form, uh, of course, that is gonna be R C I S, right? Radius times cosine. Uh, then we have our um, imaginary component times sine. This is a, a pretty common abbreviation for trigonometric or polar form, this is the answer. Okay, so two times cosine 150 plus I sine 150. And a lot of this work uh, you should be able to do even without the aid of a calculator. I know a lot of you are saying, without a calculator, this is crazy stuff. There's no way I'm just gonna drop this course. Please don't drop this course, okay? You're smart enough to do this. It just takes a lot of work and study and effort, okay? That it does. All right, now you should kind of pause the video, all right, or just check to see if you can take this thing and write it into this thing, because if you cannot take this complex number Z, okay, in A plus B I form and put it into polar trigonometric form, don't even continue to um, 
you know, uh, try to figure out De Moore's theorem because this is the first step. Okay, so this is a skill, a dedicated skill. You can figure it out, but again, this right here does take some work. So double check that you can do this. Now, if you can do this, then you are going to be good to go when it comes to De Moore's theorem. So let's go to continue on now. Okay, so here is our uh, question. So we have Z, well, not our question, here's our setup, right? So we have this complex number Z, and it's uh, negative square root of three plus I. Again, this is an A plus B I form, but we need to put this thing in trigonometric or polar form, so there it is. So now we have this complex number Z in both forms. We're gonna need this form to use De Morve's theorem. So what we wanna do is take this complex number Z and we want to uh, uh, take it to the eighth power. Okay, so that this is the question. So this is really, we're uh, trying to figure out what Z to the eighth power is equal to. So remember, Z is equal to this and Z is equal to this. So these are equivalent, they're just in different forms. Okay, so let's go back to De Morve's theorem. It says if Z is equal to uh, this right here, which I guess is the trigonometric form. If the complex number, you can just kind of interpret this. Hey, if our complex number is in trigonometric form, okay, so this is a complex number, and n is any positive integer, then z to the n is equal to r to the n times cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through and interpret De Morve's theorem. And this is just a set of directions. Uh, you know, if we have this already set up right here, what we're looking for is this n. And what's our n for this problem? Z to the n is what? Well, we're trying to find this comp, we're trying to take the eighth power of this complex number. So eight is n, okay? This is our n, it's the actual power, okay? So we can see that here. So z to the n, this is gonna be eight, is gonna be equal to r to the n, and then we're just going to put that uh, 8 right here and that 8 right there because this is n. So this is not um, the hard part of uh, the setup, at least. We do have some cleanup work to do, so let's go ahead and, and do this right now. Okay, so z, this is our complex number in trigonometric form. So we have our complex number. We're going to take it to the 8th power. Again, this is our complex number z. is going to be equal to, now let's just go back over here and make sure we understand. Okay, so it's r to the n. Now, what is r? We have to really pay attention to, to this. This is r right here, 2. Okay, so this is going to be r to the n, or 2 to, remember, n, again, is 8. That's the power. Okay, so this is going to be 2 to the 8th. All right, so hopefully you understand that. Cosine n times r angle. So that is going to be n. Again, n is 8 times the angle 150 degrees. And you're gonna to have to put this in parentheses. We're gonna to have to figure this out in a second. Plus I times N times that angle. This is always gonna be the same. So that's gonna be eight times 150. All right, so let's go ahead and take the next step. So two to the eighth power is 256. And now we're gonna have cosine of uh, 1200, eight times 150 is 1200 plus I sine, eight times 150 is 1200. So 1200, what is that? Well, remember, we have uh, this uh, large angle is going around uh, our circle here. How many times? Well, it went around three times and then another 120 degrees. So 120 degrees, cosine 120 degrees is the same thing as finding cosine of 1200 degrees. And uh, sine of 1200 degrees is the same thing as sine 120 degrees. Okay, so at this point here, uh, you should be able to tell me what is the sine and cosine of 120 degrees? And again, you should be able to do this without the aid of a calculator because we're dealing with all these special right triangles like 30, 60, 90 degree right triangles. So uh, this problem, again, if you weren't doing this without a calculator it's, uh, and you are able, now uh, this is a problem you uh, should be able to do without a calculator, could easily take you 10 to 15 minutes, okay, of work because it's like problems within problems within problems. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So cosine of 120 degrees is gonna be equal to negative one half and sine of 120 degrees is square root of three over two. Now, if you are using your calculator, that is fine. Okay, it all depends upon, you know, what you're going to see on your test. Uh, so your teacher may or may not, on some questions, um, 
you know, it's certainly if you are dealing with nice, lovely angles like 120 degrees, 60 degrees, 30 degrees, and their uh, equivalent angles with radians, uh, those problems are probably, uh, you know, not going to, you're not going to be able to use a calculator because those, um, you're dealing with degrees that you should know, uh, you know, you're dealing with trigonometric functions or degrees or trigonometric functions of degrees, excuse me, of things that you should already know by your little table that you created in trig course. Yeah, this is a lot of stuff. I get it. But uh, if you're dealing with something like, say, 62 degrees or 49 degrees, those type, then you simply have to use your calculators. Okay, so now that we have all of this, we what we have to do is put this all together. We're almost there. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know, uh, you could probably think to yourself, like, boy, this guy put this uh, all together for you, for me to understand this. It might be a little bit of work. Well, yeah, it is a little bit of work, but I love teaching math. It does me no good to have all this information. You know, I'm trying to help you understand it, okay? Particularly uh, those of you that are having a tough time at this level of math, which is a lot of you, okay? A lot of people are like, how is so good in algebra and geometry? But now this stuff is getting hard, and, you know, maybe you might be con concerned about your grade. You're like, I was starting off with an A, and now I'm going down to a B, and now I'm going down to a C. Now I just want to pass. This stuff is getting hard. Well, listen, don't get discouraged. Uh, this is quite normal. So what you're going to have to do, if you feel like your grade's going this way, you're going to have to increase your effort this way, okay? And you need great comprehensive instruction. I could definitely help you out with this stuff. Check out my full pre-calculus course. You'll see a link to it in the description below. It'll teach you everything you need. But if this video is enough, well, just give me a nice little uh, subscribe uh, to say thanks, Mr. YouTube Math Man, and then hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this all together. All right, so remember, we had 2 to the 8th right here. We figured that out. That's 256 times cosine 120 degrees plus I sine 120 degrees. We know that cosine of 120 degrees is negative 1 half, and sine of 120 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so we're going to replace this stuff out. Uh, with these values and remember this problem stated that we wanted the answer in rectangular form or a plus bi form okay so that's going to be 256 again we're going to uh, replace uh, the cosine 120 with this so that gives us negative one half here and then i sine 120 is going to be i the sine of 120 is this value so that's going to be square root of three over two Okay, so now let's just go ahead and apply the distributor property here. We'll take this, multiply it by this stuff. So 256, or one, one half of 256 is uh, negative one half of 256. It gives us negative 128 plus uh, 128 right here, because we have this two, goes in that. I'm pretty sure you could do this basic multiplication. Um, I square root of three. Okay, so here is our answer. And what we did is we took this complex number Z in a plus b i form, rectangular form, took it to the eighth power. And uh, the way we did this is we took this uh, value, this number, or this complex number, z, we put it into trigonometric or polar form. Then we applied the Morphs theorem. Then we did all the crazy stuff with the Morphs theorem. We cleaned it up, and then we put uh, the answer back into um, a plus B I form. Now, sometimes you'll be asked to uh, uh, put your answer into trigonometric or polar form because you got to be uh, careful with these problems. So this is the answer. And uh, again, this is only one part of what you need to know at this level of math. Isn't this exciting? But listen, if you're taking this level of math, it's probably a good chance that you're going to be developing the next uh, AI algorithms for Google or doing some crazy uh, stuff, you know, with, um, you know, who knows? You know, you're probably well on your way to uh, being highly su uh, successful with a STEM major. STEM, if you don't know what that stands for, is science, technology, education, and mathematics. But here's the deal, okay? Even if you are not a student and just kind of want to check out what this is about, that's great as well, all right? But this uh, level of math is something you, uh, that you definitely have to understand before you get into more advanced math like calculus. Okay, so hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.